President Trump does a lot of complaining on Twitter, and now he's going after Twitter itself. If you look at Twitter, I have millions and millions of people on Twitter, and it's, you know, it's a very good arm for me. It's great social media. But they don't treat me right. And I know for a fact, I mean, a lot of people try and follow me, and it's very hard. I have so many people coming up. They say, sir, it's so hard. They make it hard to follow. This is just one of a series of recent comments uh, that he's made both online and on camera that demands setting the record straight. So CNN's Daniel Dale is the man for the job. He is our uh, resident expert on tracking the president's untruths. So, Daniel, um, we've got a couple claims to get through, but talk to us about what we just heard the president say about Twitter. It's not hard to follow the president or anyone else on Twitter. You just click a button. What did happen was <laughs> last year, Twitter purged fake accounts, bots, from lots of people, including myself and other reporters and other regular people. The president lost a few hundred thousand followers in that purge. Um, so that, you know, if he wants to cl complain about that, that's fair enough. But there was no evidence that it is difficult to follow him. And I will note quickly that one of the telltale signs that he is about to make a false claim is if he tells a story in which someone calls him sir. So note, note the sir there and note the sir in, in future stories. Uh, sir equals untruth. Tall tales. Um, here's another one. Uh, I have the president tweeted this today. Uh, As most people are awake, according to the polls, I won every debate, including the three with crooked Hillary Clinton, despite the fact that in the first debate they modulated the sound on me and got caught. The crew looks somewhat easier than crooked, but you never know. Did he did he win every debate, Daniel? No. So according to scientific polls like the ones conducted by CNN and many other news outlets, he lost every debate. And these are the polls with, you know, random samples, margins of error and so on. So CNN had him losing the first debate very badly, like Hillary Clinton was in the 60s. Um, the second debate, Hillary Clinton was in the 50s. Uh, and the third debate, she was at 52. What Trump did win were, were junk polls that websites do to increase reader engagement. So those are the ones where you can just go and click, you know, who do you think won the debate? And so you can just flood those sites with you know thousands of your followers and win those polls and, and so when we're talking about scientific polls the real polls no he did not win okay uh, Trump also tweeted people are fleeing New York like never before if they own a business they are twice as likely to flee and if they are a victim of harassment by the AG of the state like what they are doing in our great NRA which I think will move quickly to Texas where they are loved <laughs> dot 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 what is he even talking about? <laughs> so there's a lot there. I'll stick to the first part, which is about people leaving New York. There are a large number of people leaving New York. In fact, according to a conservative think tank in New York, um, the Empire Center that, that follows this issue, New York lost about 1.2 million people uh, to domestic migration. That's people leaving for other states uh, between 2010 and 2018. But that's not the highest of all time. In the 1970s, when there were big concerns about crime and decay in New York City, uh, the state lost more than two Two million people through that decade, sometimes 300,000 in a single year. So yes, the numbers are high, but no, this is not the all-time record. I think like never before is another tell. Speaking of it, New York. It is. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of New York, it's, it's one of the cities I get to mention in this bizarro exchange with Tucker Carlson. Here's a clip. You come to where we are now, Osaka or Tokyo, and the cities are clean. There's no graffiti. No one going to the bathroom on the street. You don't see junkies. It's very nice, isn't it? Very different from our cities. Yep. Well, no, some of our cities. Some are of right, our but cities. But New York City, San Francisco, Los Angeles, they, they've got a major problem with it's very sad. With filth. Very sad. Why is that? Uh, it's a phenomenon that started two years ago. It's disgraceful. I'm going to maybe, and I'm looking at it very seriously, we're doing some other things, as you probably noticed, like some of the very important things that we're doing now. But we're looking at it very seriously because you can't do that. You can't have what's happening where police officers are getting sick just by walking the beat. I mean, they're getting actually very sick uh, where people are getting sick, where the people living there are living in hell, too. Although some of them have mental problems where they don't even know they're living that way. In fact, perhaps they like living that way. Uh, they can't do that. You, we cannot ruin our cities. Where is that question coming from, or just in general, that conversation? 
so th this is one of the, these Trump stories that's so hard to fact check because it seems like there are nouns missing. Like, what is it? What is that? What is the phenomena? Um, what is he thinking very strongly of doing? And so it's hard to be definitive. It seemed like he was talking about homelessness, in which case you have to ask the question, really, homelessness started two years ago? Of course, you know, this is a problem that's plagued the United States for, for centuries, you know? Um, and so it's, it's very hard to determine what the president was saying, but we know that, that he was incorrect in at least some way. And then lastly, just on the nation's military, and I think I've heard him say this before, this is what he said about pay raises for the troops. And, and you know, know one, one thing, thing I didn't mention, mention you also got, got very nice, nice pay raises for the last couple of years. <laughs> oh, you care about that. They care about that. I, I didn't think you noticed. Yeah, you were entitled. You know, it was close to 10 years before you had an increase. 10 years. And uh, we said it's time. So you hear the roar of the crowd, Daniel, but fact check that for me. Well, they, they roared for their raise, but it's not true that Trump got them their first raise in about 10 years. Members of the military have gotten a raise every year since 1961. There was a brief administrative quirk in 1983, but they essentially got a raise that year as well. So for decades, every year, including under Barack Obama, the troops got raises. What is true is that the raise this year, 2.6%, was the largest in about 10 years. It was the largest since uh, 2010, so nine years. And so Trump could have boasted, you know, this is the biggest increase in about a decade. Instead, he falsely claimed this is the first increase in about a decade. And this wasn't a one-time slip of the tongue. He's done this before, including in another speech to the troops that time in Iraq. So this is yet another repeat false claim from the president. Our favorite human fact check, Mr. Daniel Dale, thank you very much for thank running you. through all of that with me. Good to have you on.